Daniel Jones was supposed to be the quarterback of the future for the New York Giants. You know, the guy to take over for Eli Manning. But after having his lackluster third season shut down due to injury, the New York Giants find themselves in a bit of a pickle. What do they do with him? Well, I'm here to get my two cents on that matter. But before we get into the video, make sure to leave a like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll greatly appreciate any support you're willing to give. And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Sports But Casually. Now let's kick things off. Daniel Jones played his college career at Duke, where he was a three-year starter. He put up some good numbers, but nothing really eye-popping. But luckily for him, he entered the 2019 NFL Draft, which turned out to be a very weak class for quarterbacks. No, 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 no offense, Kylo. Not you. It just so happened that the New York Giants were desperate for a new quarterback, so they selected Daniel Jones with their sixth overall pick. It was very shocking, and definitely a reach. But with other teams desperate for a quarterback, the Giants didn't feel comfortable waiting till their 17th overall pick to snag him. So they took him at 6. I kinda understand the move, it makes sense. But before you go bashing the Giants for wasting their selection, Kindly remember that the Oakland Raiders selected Cleland Farrell with their fourth overall pick. Yeah. But honestly, this looked like a really great move early on. Jones had a stellar preseason and was eventually named the starter for the Giants by week three, where he had an absolute monstrous performance against the Tampa Bay Bucks. He led the G-men from an 18-point deficit. He became the first Giants rookie quarterback to win their first start since 1980. And the cherry on top of all of this, he was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. How bad? He would go on to have a killer rookie season, putting up great numbers despite only starting 12 games. I mean, he did have his flaws, no doubt. He led the league in fumbles that season, and he had his fair share of accuracy problems. But there were a lot of positives, and a real belief that he would build upon his great success from his rookie season and have an even better sophomore season. But this is where things get a bit tricky. Following his rookie season, the 2019 season, the Giants fired their head coach Pat Shimmer and hired rookie head coach Joe Judge. Another Patriot guy, just, just great. They would also hire former Dallas Cowboys head coach, Mr. Eight and Eight, um, um, I mean, Jason Garrett, to be their offensive coordinator. The 2020 season, despite it being a better season for the Giants record-wise, saw a huge step back by not only Daniel Jones, but their entire offense as a whole. Now, to be fair, this was due to a multitude of reasons. Um, Saquon only played two games, multiple injuries to his offensive weapons, uh, truly god-awful play calling, and probably one of the shittiest offensive lines I've ever seen in my entire life. But still, seeing this massive drop-off in production and statistics for Jones is very alarming. I mean, throwing for less than half the touchdowns you threw in your rookie season, it's no way, no. Yet, it wasn't all bad. We saw a lot of improvements from Daniel Jones. His accuracy was a lot better, especially his downfield accuracy. He made plays with his legs, and not to mention he actually held onto the football this time. So, you know, good stuff. Okay, let's just forget about that season. Coming into the 2021 season, there was a lot of optimism surrounding the Giants. Uh, the front office splashed real cash bringing in offensive weapons for Jones to throw to like Kenny Galladay and Kyle Rudolph. And if their defense could somehow replicate their top 10 form from the previous season, you're looking at a team that is fairly competent. I mean, someone even thought that they would win their division. I wonder who that jackass was, boy. Finally, I'm going to add the football team might make the playoffs and who I think will win that division would be the Giants. Oh yeah, it was me. <sighs> Safe to say that this season didn't go exactly how I thought it would. But we did see some improvements from Daniel Jones, though not statistically. 
I thought he created a lot more plays with his legs and was actually making some game-winning plays for the Giants and put them in positions to take the lead. It just so happens that a lot of the plays that he did make didn't translate into Ws. Their offense, despite a healthy Saquon Barkley and the new additions, was not only very embarrassing, but still bottom 10 in the league. And their defense went from top 10 to bottom 10 pretty quickly. And to make matters worse, Jones only played 11 games this season, as he was placed on IR due to a neck injury. So heading into the 2022 offseason, the Giants are in a very tough spot, as they don't know exactly what to do with Danny Dimes. I mean honestly, I don't really blame them, it's a very tough decision. But if it was up to me, and what I think, I honestly believe that you should hold on to him. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me explain. Don't click off the video. Don't dislike. It's not long term. You see, if I was the Giants front office, I would be aiming for 2023, actually. That off season and that season to really make a push. Now, let me explain how we will get there. First off, Daniel Jones is the starter for the 2022 season. But you decline his fifth year option thus making him a free agent in the 2023 offseason and you owe him no money. Now, okay, so there are a lot of reports saying that, you know, the Giants want to move on from Daniel Jones. They want to get, you know, one of these top tier quarterbacks either by free agency or by a trade. Which is all, you know, fine and good. You know, you want to always upgrade your quarterback position. I totally understand. But that's going to be very difficult for them this offseason. They have next to no cap space, so... Signing guys would be very hard. You have free agent, your free own free agents to sign plus your draft class this year. And via trade, because you have no cap space, you're gonna to have to move out some guys. You know, and teams, especially if you're trading for you know one of the top tier quarterbacks like a Deshaun Watson, like a Aaron Rodgers, like a Russell Wilson. Not only will it be a lot of first round picks, a lot of draft capital, but they would want good players to go along with that. So, you can do it. I'm not saying that it would be impossible for them to pull it off. But Daniel Jones has been injured a couple of times. His statistics are very low. So, if you want to package him with the deal, it's, he doesn't have much trade value as he would have like coming, out, coming off his rookie season. So, I just say stay the course with Daniel Jones this next season as a starter. Push for the 2023 season. Now, they could always go the other route by using one of their two first round picks this year in the draft to select a quarterback. Fine, I guess. But from everything I've read so far, this quarterback draft class doesn't seem to be too strong. I could be totally wrong about that, by the way. I don't watch college football whatsoever. So maybe they have a lot of studs here, but that's just from reports and things that I've read. I think the smarter thing for the Giants to do is to use these two first round picks, you know, plus the nine others they have in the 2022 draft, to really beef up the roster and improve areas of weakness. Offensive line, major weakness. Linebacking core, should address it. Not to mention your pass rush, you know. Those are three areas of weakness I would like to see them address. In 2023, not only would the Giants have a lot of cap space then, but they would have 30 of their players already locked up for that season, including majority of the wide receivers and the secondary, not to mention some of their core players that they have already signed on big deals. So you have majority of your roster already, a lot of your core pieces you want to help build around. Now, of course, off season, you would have to sign guys this off season and next, but you would have more cap space to really push and sign off free agent quarterback in 2023. Some of the 2023 projected free agent quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, Baker Mayfield, Taylor Heineke, and even Lamar Jackson, although I doubt he'll hit the open market, but still, you have a bigger pool of people to sign than you do in the 2022 offseason. You have more cap space to work with if you want to go that route. So I just think it'll make more sense, you know, push for the 2023 season. But that's just my opinion. Daniel Jones has talents, potential, mobility, and a cannon arm. He makes winning plays. He's a good quarterback. But let's be real. 
He's been fucked ever since he entered the league. He's already on his second head coach. If he sticks around with the Giants in 2022, he'll be already on his third offensive coordinator. He's been playing behind one of the worst offensive lines in the history of ever, I guess. Uh, Saquon Barkley, the running game, has been inconsistent. Now, let's also remember the front office and their mistakes from bad drafting to horrible free agency moves. Making win-now moves when you should be rebuilding. So, I honestly think that the separation of Danny Dimes and the New York Giants would be beneficial for both parties. I have no doubts that he'll get a second chance somewhere else and there's a pretty good possibility that he could ball out next season. But I think it's time for the Giants to, you know, cut their losses on this one and start over fresh. It's all up to Dave Gettleman to not only move on from Daniel Jones, but to make the proper moves necessary to ensure that the next quarterback they get in here would be successful. Which I doubt he'll do. So I think the Giants' first step is to fire Dave Gettleman and then start to rebuild. But guys, that is it for this video. That's just my little two cents on the whole matter between Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. Just giving my pitch of what the Giants should do and how to move on from him. What do you all think? Should the Giants keep him? Should the Giants trade him now? Should they trade him later? And who is a quarterback you would like to see play for the New York Giants? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you for my next upload and have a fantastic 2022. Later.